making a video. Yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I really just shouldn't be doing these kind of videos anymore, but, uh, you know, just in the mood. Uh, I just want to do something more plain and simple, organized, kind of like the Vlogger Dome thing, right? It covers all the basic subjects, and you just try to do an hour of, you know, really good stuff. And so maybe I haven't done an hour of good stuff yet, good enough. Uh, but I think that's the idea. It's, uh, uh, the, the truth is not... I mean, it's really not a, a long novel. You know, to... It's just not. Um, there's a story. It's probably a way to tell the story of what it is to be alive. Maybe I'll just make up, like, a turtle character. <laughs> you know, just write it as a children's story. Um... You know, a turtle is a good idea. I like turtles. Um, but yeah, it's just not that complicated, this arriving <clears throat> on sentient Earth and recognizing that it wasn't, uh, wasn't a shiny city <laughs> on a hell planet. It was the swamp full of crap planet. And uh, that's the nature of nature. It's nature sucks. Nature's nature sucks. You know, it's a fucked up sentence, but I'm like fucked up sentences lately. I'm going with um, failure fixes failure. <laughs> yeah. Um, as a response to Anna Kantavad, of course. Um, guilt. Guilt is just acknowledging failure. Bottom line. That's all it is. And failure sucks. So he keeps arguing how guilt is a negative thing. Well, yes, of course it is. Because failure is a negative thing. Failing sucks. Failing means you, you left some suffering on the table kind of thing. You fucked up. Um, it would be better if you could fix that. And the fix is you don't do it in the future. And that's what you learn from failing. Is, damn... I don't want to keep doing that. Um, you know, it's like a game. So Piro's icon is this stupid game. Craig won. He's got a score of some kind. He's at level 53 or something. Or level 13, 53 lines. I never really could get into this whole Tetris thing. Never got it. I'm just not a Scrabble wordy kind of, you know, dyslexic, so, you know doesn't work for me. This is some sort of color thing, so it doesn't have anything to do with letters. Uh, but who cares? If I'm going to play a video game, it's, you know, I want it to have some synthetic chicks in it or something. I, you know, I don't want to do this. But anyway, that's just me. I don't really, you know, I just don't have time, you know, unifying physics and all that kind of stuff. I'm busy. I'm a busy guy. I just don't have time for this much. But anyway, I don't have time for five hours and 41 minutes of this shit either. So anyway, I went through it as a bleep, 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 bleep. And I said, oh, okay. They're going to talk about slavery, hierarchy, and guilt. Uh, whatever. So there's some idiot who's in there somewhere. I can't remember his name. Vivian? <laughs> I don't know. Um... Claims animals don't feel, which is just ludicrous. I mean, you know, when Vic Mackey seemed almost to be the smartest guy in the room, that's when things really get scary. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, it's like when a Hothleday's in there. He's always smarter than any of these idiots. And Hothleday's an idiot. Uh, you know, it's just, so this is just so bad. Um, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, guilt uh, is the theme for, for Anticondivod, anyway. And, um, he just wants everybody to acknowledge that somehow this is a negative force, but it's a negative force because it, a negative thing happened. Failure. And when failure is corrected, though, that's a very good positive thing. So I guess I could argue for my own life that every instance where I felt guilt, first off, it was self-imposed. Somebody else didn't throw it on me and smother me in it. Um, I logically understood a circumstance and said, holy shit, what an asshole I am. 
Now, somebody else could have informed me. Hey, you know what? You just, uh, you know, that food you wasted on your plate there. It could have fed people in China. And I would say, you know something? That's absolutely correct. I mean, it's better that somebody eat it than me throw it in the garbage. That's quite obvious. So I guess I shouldn't put it on my goddamn plate unless I intend to eat it. Yeah, that makes sense. So now I've corrected. I failed. I was failing to meet an efficiency standard, and I now I've realized, oh, okay, I can fix that. And the same thing with vegetarianism. I mean, I, yeah, I felt bad for a while that I was a shithead for as long as I was, but I said also that, well, this culture's just been fucking beating me the shit out of me my whole life. It's been just telling me how I'm an asshole, <laughs> you know, and I didn't realize, you know, I just didn't have the courage to say no. The culture's an asshole. I'm the good guy. And, yeah, when I finally realized that, then I knew what it meant to be a good guy. And to be a good guy meant you didn't play this idiotic game where you pretended the animals you were exploiting and torturing weren't real. And you said, fuck that. I'm going to quit failing to be decent. And I'm going to try to be decent. And that was a very positive thing. So you can argue that somehow this guilt is a negative force, but in my opinion, it's a very positive force to acknowledge fucking failure. And that's what guilt is. I don't think there's any better definition of it. Somebody come up with a better definition? Fine. I think that's one hell of a fucking good definition. Guilt is acknowledgement of failure. The need for improvement. All right, so anyway, we'll play some of this. Shit. So this is the beginning. Piro by himself. Ooh, scary, scary. How could it be 431? What does that even mean? 431. Four hours and 31 minutes from the end? No, because this can't be an hour into it. Because he's by himself. He's by himself. Well, let's just play it. Play along. The scene and remembers what the colors are that are there. And then it just keeps spot checking really quickly to keep that refreshed and maintained and that's what we're doing in all of our cognition when you feel you're in this 3d space you're in a concert hall well you're in one little location you're seeing a certain angle and you're seeing it over time everything's changing while you move around so when you leave one spot what was there oh whatever this is just stupid shit yes obviously your brain fills in the brain it does compression it has compression software and it just like these videos when a video plays, right, it knows stuff that doesn't change, and it says, "Okay, that stuff doesn't change. Don't, don't, don't count that. Just, just, just do that once, and and then we'll just fill that in. But let's only do the, the parts that changes. And it's, it's called a variable versus a constant bit rate. So if the file was a constant bit rate, it would be a standard size, big, and if it's got a variable bit, bit rate." Well, then it can be much, much reduced because all the bits that don't move, that don't change, you'll just say, that's not changing. Ignore that part. Yeah, only pay attention to the part that's changing. Yeah. All right, big deal. Who cares? Moving on. Ah, dumbass was in the room. And Anybody there? Nobody was talking because dumbass is in the room. Ah. <sighs> I guess his name is Joe now or something. Joe Smo or something. Uh, yeah. Alright, well, that part's pretty boring. Now let's get past that. Guy looks like Angry Joe, but he isn't. And, uh, it's kind of got a polished looking vlog with the, you know what I mean? I don't know. Anyway, he was talking 10 reasons I don't like the MRM, and one of them was. It's slightly misogynistic, or seems, and he specifically said, "No, there's some things in the MRM that I agree with, and I'm not called." Oh, whatever. This whole male-female thing. The the bottom line is, is that you know, men just don't have the same vulnerabilities as women do, and it's just the bottom line to me. And when women can go for a walk in the woods alone, when they can have the same liberty I have, then I'll say. Feminism has done its job. We're done. We're finished. But that's not the world we live in. And women are going to be pressured, and they're going to be exploited, and they're going to be taken advantage of. They're going to be more. They're more likely to be lied to. Uh, and that's just a fact. By men who intend to just exploit them, use them. 
Um, and, you know, until that changes, I don't think men have anything to whine about. Women have so much of the burden here. I mean, a period and childbirth. And men are whining. I mean, I think you got the, you're on the, you're on the better end of the stick. You also have a fucking penis for fuck's sake. And you're whining. You're complaining. I mean, you got the better hardware. And, you know, it's certainly more usable hardware. I mean, it's better. And it's, it, it's really starts easy. It's not like some kind of chainsaw where, you know, you say, oh, who knows? It might work. It might not work. I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, wieners are really easy to operate, where vaginas are all over the place. I mean, who knows what, you know. It's in the mood for 43 seconds and, you know, full moons and months with a W in them. You know. I mean, you know, it's just so hard. And what are you bitching about, you little bitches? I made a contract and I didn't keep it. And now I'm all bitchy because I had to pay a price for breaking the contract. Fuck you. Ugh, so sick of this inane, whiny conversation from little wienered men who are bitching because they, I can't own me no women no more. Uh, yeah, that's right. It's a bitch. Oh, Hoffa Day was in the room. Didn't last very long. Ooh, I'm curious. I didn't see any bits with him in it. Are you just supposed to show up in the mall and start screaming about something? No, you have to find a particular issue, right? If, if, if Mothers Against Drunk Driving, they, when they started, then they started collecting these stories about drunk driving fatalities, terrible stories and pictures and stuff. You have to have an issue. You can't just go, I'm for safety, and then accomplish... Well, whatever. I didn't even need mothers to do that. It's just kind of sad and tragic how long it took to fix that and how long it took, like, even for movies. You know, if you look at the old movies, um, I noticed that especially in, like, the... Um, whatever that detective guy was, the thin man. Yeah, those old movies... I mean, he was always drinking and driving. He was always drunk and driving. I mean, it was just, you know, and it was so, even then, they already knew that, you know, way too many people were getting killed on the road, you know, and it just seemed like they just were not, we're not taking it very seriously. Which making drunk driving illegal. You have to focus on that issue. Therefore, to work in humanism or any social justice, you need to have concepts in areas like labor rights, peace activism yeah, you know, Piro's theories politi of political change which he has had no success in his life in implementing at all so whatever buddy <laughs> you tell us how to do it when you haven't done it whatever he just hasn't he's a sign holder upper not much of a change maker this guy's an asshole a lot of back and forth because i noticed i just started subscribing to, to gary's stuff and i noticed he i don't know does he find someone to make fun of and he goes through their <laughs> yeah you're pretty funny I, what the hell is this shit anyway i'm a cartoon character look i'm a cartoon character mr funny beard whatever goes and just tell, says they're an idiot and stuff and some of those all right that's all i do i just say you're an idiot no i i say you know with the deepest sincerity you people are killing my brain you're fucking so goddamn stupid i have to explain that suffering sucks i'm on planet fucking earth and we have all of recorded goddamn history we have notions of the black plague the black death you know, horrible, pukey, sore-covered, pestilent, smell-covered people dying horribly, and I have to explain suffering sucks. And you're telling me I'm the villain because I dare to say, God, mother, fucking damn, you people are stupid as goddamn fucking rocks. Dumb fucking Christians know that it's 
bad to have leprosy. Even dumb motherfucking cunt moron Christians can figure this shit out. And you're bitching at me because I've had my fill of morons who need the word bad explained to them. Fuck you. The videos you picks are that are that Justin guys. Oh, I pick them. Oh, why don't you pick them for me, shit for brain, okay? Fuck face who's gonna make accusations. Go ahead, give me a list of motherfucking videos that deserve my fucking attention, please. Please. Right. Yeah, they've been talking back and forth. Yeah, they've been talking lately about physics, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, Piro, you're not even on, you know, Piro's not even on planet in Mandem, you know what I mean? He's not, he doesn't watch my videos, hasn't, hasn't, didn't even watch them when he watched them, he didn't barely watch them. Um, so, and he just talks out of his ass. Well, I just have this impression. Well, I now I just have an impression, because I'm, well, Piro doesn't make any videos, so how could I have an impression? But my impression is, oh, what a fart head. <laughs> yeah, that's my impression. A bunch of farty gas flies out of his mouth forever, on and on and on, he drones, and nothing comes out, you know, with noises of some kind. Fuckhead. I've been watching a lot of it, but Gary has his weird physics theory of just pointless. Yeah, okay, uh, weird physics theory, just pointless. Would you like to bet, like, something real? Like actually having one of your nuts surgically removed. <laughs> okay, I'm willing. You wanna you wanna have a contest? I'm gonna be right, and you're gonna be one nut short. If you wanna go for the bet, so you wanna bet against me? You're so sure it's as wacky it's as wacky as a Christian theory, or it's as how wacky are you gonna compare it to? What kind of theory are you gonna compare it to? How wacky is it, huh, Mr. Piro? I'm just going to love mocking you for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's going to be just so much fun. Just to, I could just take a clip like that. So everybody just remember that clip. I'll just play them over and over and laugh. Ah, you don't know. You're talking shit again, aren't you? That's right. You're just a shit talker. A lazy brained shit talker. Proof right there. Yeah, they're, they're going over the uh, Benetton value system again, too. Oh, that's um, right. Yeah. I forgot about that. No, I forgot about that. No, we're not really going over Benatar. I don't, where did you find that? I, that I'm arguing with Logic Rolls of Dice, not Hothla Day. So that's just plain bullshit. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and this asshole, this Quintucka guy, says Schopenhauer is the inventor of the asymmetry. I'd like to see the quote where he invented the asymmetry. <laughs> okay, where he talked about the, the idea of, of good and not bad. Yeah, I don't think he did that. Just inside of it, I don't watch Darius' videos anymore. Yeah, uh, he, uh... Yeah, well, like I said, who can suffer through yours? You're always drinking, smoking, or something -ing in your videos. You always sound like you're not ready to make a video. A fucking dim-brained piece of fucking, you know... Well, um, I was talking to, uh... Oh, he's calling himself TJ now. Quintucka -ca -ca -ca, the porn police, <laughs> he's now calling himself TJ. I wonder what that stands for. Uh, Tarosia Jerkamaya. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. Well, you know, kind of in the comments, Matt, like a few of his followers and stuff. And uh, some of them uh, have conceded the uh, that Benatar's asymmetry is no good, right? And I don't know. Who's, who's conceded that Benatar's asymmetry is no good? It's a fundamental logical concept. It's the same as my zero-sum game. It's just making the argument that you're not really doing anything but cleaning up the mess your consciousness makes. Period. You're really not doing anything but cleaning up the mess your consciousness makes. The needs it creates. Not the needs that exist in the world, but the needs it makes in the world by existing. There. Asymmetry explained. All done. Go to bed. Take a nappy nap. 
Fuck you, you ignorant, dumb piece of fucking goddamn porn police shit fucking creepy motherfucking cunt bastard fucker. I wish you fucked bastards. That would be what you deserve to be fucked by and to fuck. Anyway, moving on. That's another thing you want to say to alpha male. Is it possible to have a society? Well, usually the adults are going to eat first. And then the kids get the scraps and stuff like that. Yeah. That's not slavery. That's not no. slavery. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. That is exploitation. Uh, so anyway, this whole slavery argument just gets so, you know, Anna Conavide says, oh, it's so bad about slavery. It's just role-playing of a kind. Um, and really, just, you always have to make distinctions, right? Um, about what the intent is. If your intent is to exploit for your profit, right? Well, there's the problem right there. You don't need to go any further. Now, if the theory is you have a theory of constructive organization, and you say, yes, well, some people have to be winners and losers in this constructive organization thing. Some people have to be coal miners, and some people have to be bean counters, and bean counting is going to be intrinsically more fun. And so then you try to come up with a system of fair compensation. Now, we didn't do any of that, right? So we just have an exploitation system. So we basically create desperation and then exploit the fuck out of it. And Anacondavad thinks that's so much better than the gulag. So it's so much more humane and decent to create a system where people don't have options or choices. You know, make them as desperate as possible. Drive them into the desperation, the deepest de desperation hole. Then exploit the fuck out of them and say you didn't c commit a crime. So, you know, his definition of slavery as the moral act is to compare it to some... 14th century kind of circumstance, you know, where um, if you were a, a person whose family had been disgraced or somehow the family lost their money and so you are you have nothing, um, you're, you might be of no value to society. Where if you're owned by somebody, at least you're guaranteed work and food and, you know, the basic niceties to keep you physically fit so you can serve your master. And that's, but obviously that's not a fair contract. You're not going up to somebody who has options and saying, here, I got a great deal for you. No, you're going up to somebody who has no options and saying, I'll save your life. I'll keep you from having to eat garbage and dead birds that people gave to you because they were Christians. Yes, the lovely Christians will give you some dead birds if you stand around long enough. I guess the Jews will do that too because it's Old Testament stuff. Oh, lovely people. Yeah, lovely charity. They'll give you some dead birds. They found disease. Dead birds. They found. Yum yum. Fucking cunts. Anyway, let's move along. Now, if if you were a slave of a rich man and you had a cushy job, your life was infinitely better than the majority of the free population. But even the free population were considered more or less slaves simply because they had to kowtow to other people. You're, you're aware of yeah, the case more or less. Less. Yeah, yeah, guys, right. So you're comparing yourself to double asshole and saying somehow you're not an asshole because compared to double asshole, you're not an asshole. Well, compared to shit, okay, and that's what nature is, it's a shit deal. You're sitting there saying any deal is okay. Well, fuck you. Your standards are way too low, buddy. Way too low. But a, a free Roman with a free Roman with his own land cow tagged to absolutely. You know what I mean? You could say that they were lower than slaves in the sense that a ruling class person was a slave. Well, Piro's a retard because Piro doesn't. He's, he's just thinking that uh, slave owners just have power, but they also have luxury and they do have privilege of health care and they have the niceties of protection from disease and clean water and all these other kinds of things that are going to make your life more comfortable. Now, they might not be happier per se, in the sense that they might do some thinking because they have spare time, and as soon as you start thinking about spinning ball in space, nuclear sun exploding, blah, blah, meteorites, and, you know, when you start thinking about you know, your life, well, then you start to say, shit, what am I doing on this crappy boat? You think about dying and all that kind of shit, where the slave just doesn't have time to think about it because he's just trying to heal the wounds from the whip on his back. So he's distracted. He just doesn't have time to be doing all this contemplating of his circumstances. 
where the rich, privileged people have a time to fall in love and get their hearts broken and, you know, get drunk and just, you know, wallow in the gutter. Um, but that's really not the point. The point is, isn't whether uh, masters had more opportunity, more uh, choices in life. Is that, the, of course, they do. Um, it's just about the fact that what is the real thing? It's just exploitation. It's using somebody else's life up. It's wiping your ass with someone else's life. That's slavery. That's bad. All right, moving on. Yeah, me too. But the thing is, look, look. How do you how do you accept no matter what bad thing happens in the past? How do you accept that? I know there's one way. It's simple. You use it as a learning experience. Quite so. That but you do but something let's... about it in the future. That means then you do something about it in the future. Thus, activism is a part of life. <clears throat> yeah. So now he's now he's turning guilt into activism. Um. So we're on the guilt subject now. Um. And um. Again, I, I'm just going to argue that the you know. It isn't fun. I agree. It's a fundamentally negative emotion, uh, a fundamentally negative feeling. But as a device, it will reclamate and it will create a compensating, a more than compensating elevation in your performance. Number one, your performance will improve, okay, likely um, in the future. And I think even your own self-assessment will substantially improve in that you will gain confidence in yourself. It's, a, it's There's a line from the movie, as good as it, it gets, right? It's a Jack Nicholson, um, I like, you know, I like it just because he has a compulsive disorder and all that kind of stuff, and he's neurotic, and I like that because, you know, obviously that's, I have that. And he gets the girl in the end, which is good. But there's a line in the movie you know, where he, he says something like, you know, <laughs> he's paying a compliment to somebody else. Um, you know, where he understands her pain or understands her work and her labor and her effort and her goodness. And just realizing the fact that he can see it makes him feel good about him. Right? And so there's a great positive in this acknowledgement that I have reached this level of the game, you know, <laughs> that I have conquered and mastered uh, a performance standard. And there's a great deal to gain from that in terms of confidence in yourself and, and, and feeling um, some measure of pride in your accomplishment, in your elevation of your performance. Getting some A's instead of C's and D's feels good. The C's and D's felt bad. But when you start getting the A's, it feels good. Let's 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 look at what it what it means to be a slave, okay? And now I'm I'm a oh, slave not that again. per the ancient Romans, okay? I, I know you disagree. Let's I, I, I won't put it that way. But what do you mean? I said we are all oh, fuck uh, evolutionary developed to make so many choices, I mean, for their happiness. I'm, I'm because not sure we're evolutionary is developed for the past, but as we make more choices, our evolution will master making more choices. I mean, of course... <clears throat> uh, we're not evolving anymore, newsflash. Um, not in any specific way. Philosophy is not physically evolving. It is a genetic piece of genetic code. Um, culture isn't doing any of that anymore either. This is a whole different kind of evolution by a different standard of fitness. It's always got to be acknowledged that intellectual evolution is different than biological evolution or psychological evolution. Even psychological evolution is different than DNA evolution. Our psychology has a disposition to it, a certain kind of passion built into it. But what we are passionate about, that's mutable. That's a different kind of programming. That's happening here and now. That's not millions of years old DNA knowledge. That's knowledge we're feeding our kids. And I'd argue it's not knowledge, it's bullshit. Mounds and mounds of bullshit. 
like, uh, for example, Benjamin Franklin freed his slave and she came and worked for him afterwards as a free person, you know? That relationship pretty different from Thomas Jefferson, from all the others. Right. Well, you know, different in, <laughs> you know, in what respect. Slaves really didn't have a choice. So when you freed a slave, you weren't doing them that big a favor because they weren't respected in society and they weren't commensurately paid and all that kind of stuff either. So there was no huge bargain to their liberation in a society that gave them no tools of empowerment. Uh, 20 acres and a mule. They didn't even get that. So they had no legacy to live on. They had no family property. They had no access to the, the wealth of ownership. And without those mechanisms, and especially without much of an education, yeah, you're going to have a hard time selling your labor on that open market. And yeah, when I, you say, I, oh, there's a caste, then you're pretending it's one kind of relationship. So it's always no, wrong. No, it's, that's, it's, that's it's, not it's what I'm saying. That's not no, what I'm, I'm saying inherently, inherently, a caste system says that. No, I'm not. A caste system does that. No, what, not what, you. What, <laughs> what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is, you will have certain sectors of society where you can you can join or leave those sectors of society, but you're going to have these people all living together, having or at least living in, in some sort of togetherness, even if it's on the internet, having similar uh, interests, what similar mean? occupations, similar um, uh, social stations, and they will tend like to relate to each other in that way. And that's, it's not, I'm not saying a caste that you're born into. As, as for, for example, in Germany. Oh, whatever. You know, um, yeah, uh, people with common grievances will join together to make their grievance heard. So I don't know if that, but that's not slavery. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a messy word, slavery. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Beyond, I, I mean, there's two ways to look at it is the effect and the, the cause, um, and the motive has a lot to do with what the thing is. I mean, uh, you know, you can accidentally do somebody a favor, right? You, I could steal a bottle of booze from somebody and improve their life accidentally. I accidentally improved their life, but I stole from them. And, and the motives are important in, in some of these circumstances. So it's not just about outcomes, it's about motive um, as a general subject. So when you're going to generalize the subject, I think motive's significant. You know, you know, when you want to get into specific circumstances of different kinds of um, control mechanisms, um, then you could say, yeah, I'm a slave to logic, or I'm a slave to civilization. I'm a slave to contract law. Um, in the sense that you're going to serve it, the, that interest. Um, but it's a different kind of slavery, obviously. Because there's no exploitation involved. There's only the best of intentions. Um, so it's a different kind of uh, event. stuff is so individualistic that it doesn't even look like a hierarchy anymore. It, it's just a bunch of, a very small number of people who are very powerful. That's not a hierarchy. That's just, I'm, I'm a dictator. I'm really, I think the problem I have with that is that I, I what do you... I mean, it's just, when you get into this whole hierarchy thing, I mean, obviously the hierarchies have to be earned. So the real argument is about inherited ownership or power versus earned power. And one could, I could argue that even with capitalism, if you just fix the legacy wealth thing, if you just got rid of the freeloaders riding on daddy's coattails and pretending like they're the reincarnation of the father, um, like somehow they earned it when they didn't earn shit. Uh, they didn't fight a fair fight. Um, they were just hatched into it. That you could make capitalism rational. Fairish substantially by just getting rid of this legacy element and the same is with any kind of hierarchy so if the hierarchy forces people to earn their station then you'd say it's a legitimate hierarchy and then but this gets all complicated because 
Again, it's about motive. I would argue that the President of the United States should feel like a slave. He's the ultimate slave. He should feel like that. He's the ultimate servant. He has, you know, 400 million people in the United States, let's say, plus implications across the entire globe that he has to be a servant to. The best interest of this huge net um, product that is his obligation. But do presidents act like that? No. They act like they're owners. They act like they're entitled. Uh, they act like they're having a good time, which a servant shouldn't be having. Servant's not doing his job if he's having a good time. Yeah, pretty much. A radically different society. Is that what you're referring to, Andrew? I'm not that different. Oh, very different. <laughs> very no, I don't different. think so. Well, what do you mean? Uh, depends what you mean. Well, again, Japan is a, is a, is a pure hierarchy, basically. Uh, there are those who command and those who obey. That's how Japan works. And uh, and it, it's not that way in the United States. In fact, it's almost the opposite. Well, whatever. It <laughs> says you. Uh, the rich own, the poor get exploited. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse over the course of my lifetime anyway. I've seen it happen. The people in America had something going for them in the 50s and 60s. And they gave it away. And um, gave it back to the monarchs. The monarchs were losing after World War II, and uh, they gave them back the game. Ronald Reagan just silver plattered him right into the, <laughs> you know, just, just seduced him with a bunch of candy right into the shining city of, we're going to exploit your ass. Desperation, here you come. <laughs> here you will be. A slave in shiny city of. The sort of, you know... Uh, ah, so this is the butthole who doesn't think animals feel. Fucking idiot. I mean, I'd just kick anybody that stupid out of the room. I mean, really, go to school, fuckhead. There's all kinds of books. Go read Darwin. Go read that. There's a million books that'll explain to you how, how this whole biological thing happens, okay, and what evolution is. And neurons were invented a long fucking time ago, and they've been doing this motivational thing, feeling thing, for a long fucking goddamn time. Animals are driven by the same thing that drives us. Goddamn feelings, fuckhead. Dumb fuck. Social mechanics sort of standpoint. Um, yeah, I'll, try my, I'll try my best to, to answer the question. Um, vi vivin. Vi vivin. Vi 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 in relation to language. Pussy uh, shit. Ah, the... shut the fuck up already. Douchebag. Done with him. You have no. Re you have to have this respect for uh, for the, the 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 other hierarchy. And if you. Oh, so then this was this German guy is okay-ish, but he's a little bit dumb on evolution too. And uh, so of course Anna Konovod had to speak. Oh, I have to use the fifteen German words I know over and over again. Fuck. Uh, if you re have uh, respect for authority and hierarchy, you don't. Choose to go with uh, one small uh, uh, um, messi messiah. Or... Well, whatever. Look, political systems and organizations are just that. They're just organizations. They're just games. Okay? The economy is a game. Our political enfranchisement is a game. Our democracy is a game. We all have constructed them very, very poorly. We've created a democracy that gives us a choice between asshole sellout and asshole double sellout. Okay, they're just sellouts to special interests so they can get pick up 4 million votes here and 8 million votes there and 12 million votes there. If I sell out to these three groups, I can guarantee myself a draw in the election, right? So I'll just sell out to the teachers union, I'll sell out to the rich cunts, I'll sell out to the religious fanatics. And that's all we get is two sellout parties. Both have sold out to Christianity. Both have sold out to absolute bullshit with our practical minorities in the country. But they sell out to the fanatics. 
because the fanatics represent 4 million votes they can't afford to offend. Even though they're not going to get those 4 million votes, they can't afford to lose the 2 million that they might get out of the 4 million of that group. So they have to placate these motherfucking cunts. So it's all compromise and bullshit. So that game's broken. We could fix it. We don't fix it. Our capitalism. We could fix it. We get rid of all this legacy wealth bullshit. We could just say, hey, you got to earn it, fucker. There's none of this free ride shit. Daddy gave me a $10 million business to run. Fuck you. Okay, the business goes up for sale and you have to buy it if you want to be the king of that business. You don't get to inherit your ownership of the damn world, you fuckheads. You're going to have to earn it like every fucking buddy else. It's a real game, okay? You don't play Monopoly and you get to have Boardwalk and Park Place and you didn't do shit to get it. You just get it in the beginning of the game. Who's going to play that game? Who's stupid enough to say, oh yeah, I'll play? Fuck you. I'm going to say, fuck you. I'll go fucking, you know, I'd rather go pick up garbage on the street. <laughs> you know, then play a stupid game that I'm guaranteed to 99% uh, of the time lose. Uh, fuck that. So, yeah, we could fix capitalism. Uh, you know, we could fix the social order. We could fix this whole fucking... We could fix this stupid welfare state bullshit by saying, Hey, we're not going to pay you to have fucking kids. No, we're going to maybe whap you in the head with a stick. We're going to make it unpleasant for you to have children if you're poor. But you really have no right to sit there and create liabilities you can't pay for. That's called irresponsible bullshit. Okay? If you want a pet, you got to pay for the pet, fuckhead. You don't steal the money out of somebody who doesn't have a pet. That's just fucking idiotic. That's idiotically, stupidly rude. Okay? If you're poor and you can't afford kids, then don't be rude and have them anyway. So, yeah, this is all fixable. But none of these fuckheads will fix anything. Because they all just talk shit. All right, moving on. Where you belong and you teach that from your own that you shall not be more than a worker. So yeah. in, in Germany, you have, uh, you know, if you're a carpenter, uh, they are very proud of their own, uh, uh, how to yeah. say, their own class. So they, they have, have a lot of Germany. Guilds, uniforms. Guilds, yeah, yeah. When you are finished, you, go, you can go around the... Uh, uh, with a, uh, with a... Yeah, right. You get licenses, like like licenses in this country. You have to go buy yourself a stupid license or, you know, you go to school and get a license. And it doesn't mean all that fucking much. It just means that, yes, you pay an extra tax to the state to be able to sell goods overtly into the public with some sort of guarantee that uh, you're going to be around tomorrow to sue if you did it wrong, which is a decent enough standard. Um... So, yeah, you have to have some kind of system of qualification. Yeah, that's good. And you pay people for qualification. That's good, too. So, I don't know what this shit was about, but we'll just... <laughs> I'll presume that's what it was about. And we'll move, we'll move on. Oh, asshole again. Who, Fuck that. I'm not going to uh, do... not going to do asshole. Been, no, I'm not going to do smelly asshole. Been, smelly duty brain. And he, he didn't believe uh, what he was uh, watching every day. Precisely. And I think... Uh, that yeah, is and I exactly. think uh, even Norway can turn into a bar, uh, bar uh, in, into um, complete barbarism in ten years yep. if the conditions are right. They are not better. Well, there you than go. Before. If the conditions are right, you're, so you're saying is that the conditions that cause it, but Anna Kantavad is basically saying that it's somehow intrinsic to human nature. That's no, the difference. I'm not. I'm no, not saying not that. that. I'm saying it's part of us. That's. Mm. It's part of us. He keeps saying that there's part of us that is some sort of taker, some sort of um, jackass. And I'm saying that certainly we're born selfish, um, but we can learn manners pretty quickly. We can pretty quickly learn um, that that doesn't work. I guess Anaconda, I don't think he has siblings. Um, because frankly, you learn a lot from having siblings. I mean, I learned a lot. From having three sisters and three very different you know personalities I mean you know everybody's different right but I just mean it was I had a twin sister you know I had a middle sister and I had an older sister so I had a nice variety and I learned a lot through those relationships about what a shithead I was and um, so you don't have to stay a shithead and this whole idea that there's something in me 
Okay, I mean, he keeps making these examples of some of these other people that go visit the horror sites or the, you know, the garbage websites that are out there on the internet. Well, I don't do that. Okay, I, I, I find violence nauseating, um, and I, I find uh, the brutality that exists in reality unacceptably disturbing. I mean, I can't live if I had to go look at it every day. I just couldn't live it. I couldn't survive it. As it does damage to my brain to have it rolling around in there. So um, you can make this argument that we're all got a taste for this, but I don't have any taste for it. I don't have any taste for this brutal victory. I just want the victory. Now there's moments when you people make me so angry because I can see what you're doing. I can see the, how evil and, and how how bad the future is going to be because of your idiotic psychology and the shit you're talking and how the shit you're talking is just so destructive so so very dangerous and I can get angry and I can say God I hope a steamroller just squishes you like a bug because you suck so bad you're just such a piece of garbage you're such a fucking you're such a piece of of rotten food and you're just going to make the world sick you fucking assholes so I can get angry and but that's different frustration anger uh, tension these things you know they exist but now I'm not living for them they're not where I want to go and they have absolutely nothing to do with my exercising my agenda I have no interest in the war it really is the last resort. It really is because nothing else will work. <laughs> you know, it's not something I want. I'm, I'm you know, I can't wait. No, no hunger for it. But you know, you got to stop the rapists. Violence, like, like, how, like when you say the word violence, suffer. Having feeling guilty is to suffer. Yes, but it's to do... Feeling guilty is to suffer. So again, he's, he keeps talking about this guilt thing as if it's the biggest trauma there is, and I just can't even imagine what that's about. Frankly, I think I could actually run over somebody, and I would certainly feel guilt, but it just wouldn't consume me, because I know I'd have to say, shit, I you know... I mean, it'd be nice if I could change the circumstance, but I really can't. You know, let's say I got drunk and I did it. You know, because I, I drunk drived. Um, now, I'd understand that would be a powerful sense of failure. A powerful sense of, how do I make it up? But it would occur to me very quickly that the way you fix it is to prevent somebody else from doing it. That's the quickest way to undo that negative. If I can just prevent one other person from getting run over by a drunk, I have just fixed the person I killed. I've reclamated them in the form of this other person. I have undone it. And isn't that a truth? And it's even more magical in the sense that I don't have to be a drunk. I don't have to be guilty. And I can understand that if I could stop one person from drinking and driving, I've just done a pretty spectacular thing. I've done a thing so spectacular in the good column that's as big as killing somebody, a girl, let's say a little kid, as a drunk driver. I mean, that's a pretty big bad. And I've just undone that big bad by preventing an equally big bad. Preventing bad is a powerful good. And that's what you people just fail to understand. <laughs> fail so fucking dismally. And I wish I could get you to acknowledge your failure and have a little bit of guilt over it. Because you're leaving so much power to do good on the table. Because you're not recognizing the power of preventing the bad. And it's powerful. Powerful good. Or screaming for someone to to uh, like um, Lock stop them, them. yes, yeah, stop them. So it's not that easy. I, I mean, it's uh, um, 
but they have a I, I don't know uh, they have a condition where uh, s uh, where the, the cat this guy might be Norwegian or something he might not be a German so sorry for the slight I, I don't think so I think he's German chemistry or something is driving them but then when they have done it they can feel more guilt uh, they feel guilt well, and, and, and guilt doesn't even stop them from might, doing I it. Might be able yes, to. of course not. But my empathy would stop them from doing it. Guilt, if you have guilt, it's going to stop you, okay? So I'm sorry. And the more intense your guilt, the more likely it is to be an inhibitor of future failure. So that's just a lie. If he's going to claim the guilt is devastating, the guilt can only be devastating if you've acknowledged the fact that it's correct, that it's absolutely the truth, that you failed. You can't feel guilty if you don't think you really failed. Guilt is something you do to yourself by realizing you suck and that you have to fix your suckiness. Gee, <laughs> it's nothing but a good. It's self-improving. It's the only way to get there, is to acknowledge the fact that you're not there. If you think you've, I'm done it, I'm, I'm truly the greatness of my greatness, well then you'll have no guilt, because you're great. But, if you really understand what it is to be on earth, and human, <laughs> you'll know, I'm probably falling short, and I need to do some work. And the only thing that's going to motivate me to do some work is acknowledging that I'm just not running fast enough. I'm not jumping high. I ain't going to win the gold medal this way. Uh-uh. I'm going to be a loser. And if I want to be a winner, if I want to be Nietzsche's Superman, i got to clean more negative off the table. i got to make me some more good by stopping some more bad. Yeah. Big win. These people are just so fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. the empathy crossover, the, like, like if empathy... Oh, Das Kook. <laughs> yes, hair is getting funkier and funkier. Anyway, not exactly aging gracefully. And guilt or transparencies. I do believe there's a, a, a crossover there, and, and that you can find by empathizing with something a means of guilt. I'm not saying they're the same... Uh, they're the same attribute, but I do think that, that there is a, a, a set. Yeah, whatever. Wordy, purdy, dirty, dirty. Wordy, birdie, 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 dirty, dirty, wordy. Who cares? Dribble, travel. Well, I'll tell you, when the results fit the goal of some improvement that is measured. Uh, okay, so in, in other words, if you do actually, okay, if I, if I sort of take um, a criminal and I lock him up in, in a cage, uh, he's been rehabilitated because he can't hurt anybody anymore. No. Well, that's not the definition of rehabilitation. So that's just silly. He hasn't been rehabilitated in the sense that he hasn't uh, been made to um, understand and have an internal prohibition against committing the crime, right? I have internal prohibitions against committing the crime. So I'm not in a cage for committing the crime because I won't commit it because I have internal prohibitions. So until he has those internal prohibitions, he hasn't been rehabilitated. And regardless, the whole idea of the punishing in a cage thing, again, you people who just wish to discount it existence, but I mean, it's just a fact. Deterrence. It's a real thing. It has real effects on human psychology. If you watch somebody who's doing something stupid pay a high price for that stupidity, then you're less likely to be stupid. Duh! That's not what rehabilitation means. Yeah. Okay, what's rehabilitation then? That so you can let him back out in the world and he doesn't hurt anybody. Okay, so you have to give people lobotomies to, to have them be able to, to understand and change behavior. That's what it requires a lobotomy. It doesn't require an education, right? Most crime is just an egregious offense, an egregious trespass against the most basic thing, logical understanding. There's just no logic to it. Oh, I'm going to make my life better by making somebody else's life substantially worse 
and that somehow is a rational equation. And obviously it can't be a rational equation if you understand that suffering happens in the universe and not in vessels that never, and, the, and it never escapes the vessels. I mean, it's just silly. You know, that, that asshole, right, that, that fucking whatever he is, burning bush douchebag, left some jackass comment on my video because I used a metaphor about the suffering leaking out of our brains uh, like a liquid or something. And he said something about spirituality. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it was just a bunch of spiritual talk. Quite obviously, I wasn't saying it was literally. It wasn't a literal theory, okay? Spirituality or religion, their literal truth is this God thing and all this crap. They think it's real. I'm not, I'm not arguing that that's what's really happening. I use this as a metaphor to describe it as it's like, okay, as if. Now, you don't understand? Of course you do understand that. But this is how you're just such a little petty weasel. I mean, you should, you should die of verbotosis, right? You know, having words shoved up your ass until you're dead. Because you're just a game player with fucking words. Little weaselly cunt. Anyway, that's a whole different cunt than this cunt. It makes it even worse when they come out. Give him a, give him a lobotomy. There, he's fine. He's been rehabilitated. Don't work. <laughs> uh, well, they do work, actually. Um... Yeah, so, and to some criminals, they did, you know, they did do that, and it does work. It does uh, limit their passion. Um, but what, why should we do any of this stuff? I mean, you know, for a lot of these crimes, I just don't even see why we're playing the game, especially the repeat offenders. I think it was perfectly reasonable to come up with some kind of system that says, look, you can, you can, you can make a mistake the first time, so okay, we'll be a little light on you. But when you come back the second time, now you're just saying, fuck you and your laws. You're just saying, fuck you. I don't care, okay, what you've collectively decided is, is the truth. And I'm not going to respect the bargain of living in this society. That's just a fuck you to the entire civilization. And when somebody said, fuck you to the entire civilization, I don't think the civilization has any need to play with them at all. They should just wheel them over to the guillotine and lop their motherfucking head off. Two strikes and you're done. Yeah, maybe that's enough. Three strikes is being incredibly generous. So yeah, I'd have a three strikes and you go right to the guillotine, motherfucker. No, but now that is guilt. <laughs> well, it's kind of a, a, a parent to a child, right? If the child does something like steal candy at the store, they might get a spanking, they might go to their room, and, 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 and a lot of kids steal, right? Or they do something, and then they grow up into adults that not... Yeah, whatever. I don't want to get into this whole subject, but I mean, the whole idea of corporal punishment or this, that, or the other thing, I mean, the whole idea of educating a child about the difference between the things that really matter, you know, the real character issues, and the stuff that doesn't matter. The real character issues and safety issues would be another one, right? I mean, it's almost like sometimes if a kid is so reckless with its own welfare and the welfare of others, you know, where he might get other kids killed because of his recklessness. That's a kid who needs to be shaken up, who needs its world shaken and, and stirred and, and, and um, jiggled um, to get with the program that you don't have a right, okay, to play some kind of, um, you know, ego game and get some innocent person's arm ripped off because you had to be an asshole, because you had to play who's toughest, or some other bullshit. So when a kid's lacking character, I'm not saying you beat it into him. I'm just saying that, again, it's like guilt. You have to fail to know what failure is. And once you've failed a couple of times, we should see some caution in your behavior. So if failure becomes a bit of a routine for you, <laughs> You're not getting it. Not only don't do it any longer, but they don't have any guilt for it. So were the, was the child reformed? Or, or, or is there something innate about character that you're focusing and reiterating on? It, it, either you, it's goodness that's public and objective, or it's, it's character that you're focusing on. And I guess we're trying to figure out 
Yeah, and that's that's what I I think he's trying to say that we all have this like endemic character. Like Yeah, he's trying to say that somehow we're all got some debaucherous character and we really I don't think that's true. I don't think I think we are we are it's the dark side. It's it's you know, you go back to the stupid Jedi movies, right? And the concept that yes, it's there's it's seductive, the dark side. Um, there's advantages to being a nihilist or a uh, not give a shitter is the selfishest um, and and falling into that trap but it isn't a trap you have to fall into and there is great value in once you recognize the the power of the real Superman who comes to the rescue and saves all the people from sinking in the quicksand and suffocating horribly. Yeah, it saves them for what is always tricky. You know, it's very hard. Again, you know, that's why I'm for the cure. You know, that's why I'm for prevention. Is because it's really hard to... Saving someone's life isn't necessarily a good thing. You didn't necessarily do them a favor. I mean, you know, half, at least half the people that were killed in 9-11, right? Falling out of the building they probably weren't going to have a great 10 years. <laughs> you know, half of them were going to have a shitty 10 years. You know, they're going to get cancer, they're going to, the husband will die. So they're going to have all kinds of shit happen. So they might have, it might have been the best thing that could happen to them <laughs> was to get incinerated in an instant. Now, the ones that had to jump out of the building, that's a whole other story. That just had to be, oh, that just had to be awful. I would have built myself an airplane, but, you know. I mean, it wouldn't have been a very good airplane, but it would have been. It would have had some hope. <laughs> I wouldn't have just jumped. I would have held on to something. Anyway, I would have tried flying. We're just either some of us are just born this way, like, and that's it. You just have to deal with it. But that's not true. That's demonstrably false. You can instill values. You can. You know, you can have incentive. Yes, we're entirely programmed. I mean, God damn it, this is just so fucking true. Our character, our development, it all makes a difference, and it's very different. It's a delicate thing. You know, they had people, Dr. Spock, and lots of people written books about how to reverse the psychology and do all kinds of little tricks to try to develop a human being, but we really don't have a solid blueprint yet of exactly how broken your heart should be by your first love, and exactly how this, and how many of these failures you should have, and just how small the failures can be, just so you learn your lesson, but nothing really bad happens, but you learn a lesson. It's like I had all of those. I was very lucky. I had just enough of a car accident to say, oh shit, you gotta take driving seriously. And I had, you know, I always had just the right amount of something to give me a nice taste of failure without it being a catastrophic failure. And so, yeah, I got really lucky that way. But that's what you have to do. Yeah, you have to build character that way. Little pieces at a time through little experiences at a time where you gain knowledge that this game is really fucking shitty. That it's hard to play this to win is an individual or as an athlete, uh, you know, as a performer. Um, it's, this is a demanding game to live your life and um, really make it win. You can make it win in little ways. Like I said, you could prevent one person from being, you know, maimed or harmed by a drunk driver, and that would be a win, I think, most likely, probably, maybe. Um, and so you could make your life valuable right there by just improving the game, making the world a better place than it would have been without you. This is, again, that goes back to The Christmas Carol. That movie is just so good at illustrating that. Dickens. I, I just always go back to it because it was the... You know, as, as I am to some people, right? Some people say, hey, in Mendham, you're saying all this stuff I was thinking for so long, and you're really good at putting it all together that movie did the same thing for me in that I was already there and I saw that movie and I said, oh, fuck, that's it. It's all perception. And all we have to do is recognize it, it just to see it, just to, to, to realize I suck. And guess what? The way to fix it is to not suck anymore. 
Wow. Not that tall. That's not too hard to do. I can do that. I can not suck. Yeah. yeah. It was just, it was powerful in, in terms of, it didn't do, it, it didn't, didn't make my character, but it, it just created a, a point where it just allowed it all to fall into place. And I could say, I see now that that's the difference. It's just having the dream, <laughs> you know, just having the reclamation moment and just saying, I'm not going to be what my biology says. I'm not going to be what my culture says. I'm not going to be what my family says. No, I'm going to be what's rational to be, which is as good a person as I can be. Yeah. That can slowly change a person's values. You can appeal to them in different ways. When a person says to you on a contabot and they show you... I don't even know why this asshole, I mean, really, Birdman, why he bothers with this shit, right? He has this idiotic philosophy where he doesn't believe suffering really is bad. So why, why? Why are you talking about value and all this shit? And your, your stupid subjective agreements that are irrational agreements by your own definition. If they're not rational agreement. If it isn't a logical agreement, then what's the fucking point? That's, is there a way that we can go, like, uh, into the future positive? All right, I'm going to run out of time any second now, so just letting you know I didn't finish this. Sorry. Sorry to whoever got left out. That was me. But wait, wait. But the whole, the whole point is that now it's negative, and meaning now we're talking about negative processes, and it's weird to hear Vic go, Really? Kind of like, well, you're making on a con on an initial right. point now. Right? Guilt is a huge guilt is a huge barrier to, to making progress in activism because see, people don't want to admit they're on the wrong side because then they'll feel guilty and they hate that feeling, so they will yeah. stick with being for. Oh, whatever. See, Piro again. Piro talking about activism when he's activated nothing. Um, no, whatever. I think people recognizing they suck would be a huge benefit to the human race. Uh, to have a political party that was basically the we basically suck party. We acknowledge that we basically are selfish cunts party. I think it would be a great idea. War and be for Iraq war and then, oh, now we're against Iraq war, but we want to have the next war. That's because they don't want to, if they could just feel right, when activism succeeds, it's usually because somebody felt they figured out right from wrong, different from before. <laughs> yeah. They have some kind of out. Or, for example, they... Yeah, you're just so full of shit. No, the way the mothers would write against drunk drivers, the, the you know, very successful campaign, even the original prohibitionists, uh, the way they made it work was to just drag the bodies in front of people and say, look, this is what you're causing. This is what you're allowing to happen. Here's the orphans. Here's the widows. Here's the horror. You're making it by saying you're not going to do anything to fix it. You won't build a guardrail on the bridge. You know, we, you could prevent all this horror. Just build a guardrail. So it's your choice. Here's the guardrail proposal. Vote for it or don't. But don't pretend you didn't kill people because you wouldn't pay the 300 bucks to put up a guardrail. It works. Fuck you, Piro. You're an idiot. We already knew that. There is no final in, in ethics, solution. No, there isn't. In ethics, there is no, there is no uh, ends justify the means. No, not in ethics. Can you guys yeah, even get no, no, no. The ends. <laughs> the, the means are irrelevant. The ends are all there is. I mean, in the sense that the ends, the means are built into the ends. So quite obviously, the means have to be included in the value of the end. The end is not 